हेलो फ्रेंड्स यूनिट फाइव टेस्टिंग फॉर स्पेशलाइज्ड एनवायरनमेंट अजॉल टेस्टिंग वी हैव सीन दैन द लास्ट सिचुएशन अबाउट द इंट्रोडक्शन टू अजॉल टेस्टिंग फॉलोड बाय अजॉल मेथोडोलॉजी टेस्ट मेथोडोलॉजी व्हिच कंसिस्ट्स ऑफ डिफरेंट टेस्ट ऑन द अजॉल्स नाउ लेट अस स्टडी अबाउट अजॉल टेस्टिंग लैब फैक्टर So below you find out the figure one, agile testing life cycle. In the life cycle you have studied, you have studied SDLC software development life cycle is a developing process of a product where different phases were listed out and different operations were carried on on that basis. Then you studied software testing life cycle, similar manner. all the operations the process the procedure listed out in those phases you came to know you came to know about the test plan test execution test report test bugs report in the end what you get how you finished your test procedure how you begin your test procedure all those you have seen in software testing life cycle Now we will study since we are studying a environment, a testing environment where we study a child testing life cycle. So very first is the first block. We say it's iteration. So since a child works on the increment process, the developing works on increment process similar way the testing works on the increment process. So we see how the life cycle works. That means during the first stage, that is iteration zero, perform the initial task. so what is the initial task that is saying that what is saying is to identify the people it, it is to initiate the process that means it says about identifying the people for the testing so you need to identify who are the people who will come for the testing process installing testing tools what are the tools you require who have the thorough study of the tools If you know QTP, if you know the functional tester, if you know Selenium, if you know JUnit, those are the people will be chosen out. If some people don't know about these tools which are being required, they cannot. Scheduling resources, of course, you need to estimate time. You need to estimate your resource. You need to estimate your people accordingly. You have to define the schedule. I I hope. the scheduling the deadline the delivery of the project is very clear to you since this was a part of the software engineering now what are the steps like what goals to achieve in iteration 0 the first is establishing a business case for the project that means what what are the need that had to be first identified boundary conditions and the project scope what are the boundary what are the limitations and the project scope that how will you do it when will you do it what actually the project will do it then outline the main or vital requirement and the use case that will drive out the design outline one or more candidate architectures the importance what are the risk factor the stating whenever we do a testing or whenever we develop a product in the end we have to go through the process of scheduling change and the risk for each time there is a change there is a risk and before the risk there is a schedule because for each and every small patch small build or small error which is rectified in the test again the developer it has it will go to developer the developer will fix again the tester will do until we remove all those defects or until we we, uh, we understand what is the expected behavior so again the cost estimation or the risk is required and a prepared a primary or pin pre preliminary project that means it is the again your project report this is how you do in your final year you prepare a project report or a black book say what you begin with you begin with first identifying what will you do in your project then you identify the resource then you identify the requirements okay the first thing you identify requirements then accordingly you start working on it 
If you get your requirements, if you know what to do, then you start with how to do, then all your tools, all your implementations, before that the design, and later on you test, like you prepare the test cases, you work on testing. I think so you have done this, or you will, you will do in the final year. Then, after this, the second block is construction iteration. That means it's about building up. So, in this, the majority of the testing occurs in this phase. This phase is observed as the set of iteration to build an increment of the solutions. That means your implementation of the testing, turn by turn, in an increment way, in an iter iteration way. How many that was defined earlier? This phase is observed as a set of iteration to build an increment of the solution, yes. So this is a hybrid practices. That means this has been taken from HP, Scrum, Agile Modeling, and so on. So the Agile team has prioritized or has made some important requirements or made has them as a implementations on your requirement practice that with each iteration they take the most essential requirements of course either it's a development product or is it a testing product we say that the requirements in both the cases development or testing main plays a main role it's a irony Rule. So from work time step and implement them. Then we have it is classified into two types. The one is confirmatory testing and investigative testing. So confirmatory is verifying whether the system's expected behavior conforms to the requirement specification drafted in documentation as described to the team to date and is performed by the team why that this is a verification how far this is true how far this is true that means i want to say that it verifies your output with your requirements the functional, the requirement is converted into functions like develop, uh, developer. Those functions are being tested by the testers to see whether this output is matching what the stakeholders expect to do. And the investigative team that defines, they find out the problem. If any confirmatory team has skipped or ignored. In previous talk, I just said that if you found as a tester, if you are working on your product or in your project, suppose, and if you found a small error, just uh, as a warning, like uh, in your tools, in your programming tool, normally in Java, if you do or if you do in a Python, so if there is a small warning, you try to skip that, you try to ignore that, and later that warning becomes an error, and fatal error. But to initially, first what you do, you ignore. But later, when you start coding little more, little more, little more, and that becomes a very big, the line of code has been increasing, increasing, and at time you just find out that warning has become the fatal error. This happens. This happens every, with everyone. So there is two teams which are defined, as I said, confirmatory teams is a verified and this checks or this investigative team testing is to make sure that it detects the problem that confirmatory team has skipped or ignored. So in investigative testing, test to determine the potential problem in the form of defect stories. Then 
with common issues like integration testing or load testing in case of any testing it finds some error and then again again confirmatory testing there are two types of aspects the developer testing and agile acceptance testing both of them are automated to enable continuous regression testing throughout the life cycle yes Confirmatory testing is the agile equivalent of testing to the specification. Again, it's because that confirmatory testing again and again we have to check as we meet the customer or end user requirement. In case as a tester, if I fail to see that again, I have to report this to developer. This was this is the ongoing process. Again and again, I have to see and check, test and see, test and validate, test and check. This is not a simple work. It just keep on working. Agile acceptance testing is a combinational of traditional functional testing and traditional acceptance testing. As a development team and the stakeholders are doing it together. Sometimes what happens, development team and the stakeholders, when they decide, when they talk about, they, they come up with some requirements and those requirements as documented, as I said, the functional, that requirement is converted into a functional. So that functions are being tested and those tested are being accepted by a developer, the uh, developer and the end user, then this is the acceptance, of course. So these both work side by side. When developer testing is mixed together, so it's a unit testing and traditional integration testing. Sometimes developer and testing, they can do unit testing. You can do by yourself with the help of your tool. What you do, you can you execute your code. So you co only code one module, just check one module, code it. Code one module and execute it. You just test it. You'll find it. So developer and tester work side by side. Then we have third is release or end game or transition phase that means it is to deploy your system successfully into the production that means the production is to deploy this activity includes like training of the end users support people and operational people now in business you will find this kind of term the end users, support people, production people, operational people, who are these people? End users is the customer, support people, the one who will help you with this product and operational people who will help you how to work about it. It includes the marketing of the product, release, backup, restoration, finalization system and user documents, of course, the manuals, the help, uh, the related website in case if you need, if you email with your Side. Now suppose I bought a mobile phone and that mobile phone is two days after my usage. I use two days and after my usage, my phone is not functioning. I'll call for the help. I'll check the manuals. I'll go to the shop. So they will just guide me, key, ma'am, you just mail and all. So all this is uh, required for user help because a layman cannot help themselves they need some kind of user manual or they need some kind of documentation website or custom website to check to help with those broken things the final testing stages include that full system testing and acceptance testing as usual and it in accordance to finish your final testing stage without any obstacle you need to have the test product you need to finish your final testing stage without any obstacle. Yes, true. Because if there is a hurdle, that means there is a fall. There is a fall, that means there is a defect. Defect, that means again you go back, you go for a bulk report. Then there is a bulk spacing lab cycle. There is a defect, release, start, whatever the terms mentioned. You have to start with who find those bugs, where did you find, at what time you find, who solved that bug, what was the bug. Then is is that bug was given to a developer to solve it? Did developer solve it at what time? What was the solution? But all this report, all this documentation need an answer. So they keep on working through this. 
you you should have to test the product more rigorously it's like exhaustive one do it do it do it one is this in a construction iteration during the end game tester will work on its defect slowly in case of any defect in case as i said earlier i mentioned what are those in case the defect comes up in case it encounter with the defect what are those procedures go back start again so in this way we finish with agile testing life cycle we see the challenges of agile testing in next topic till then bye